Adventure with Old Pong Geezer. Come on along. We're going to go see a total eclipse of the sun. Imagine a black wall of shadow coming at you at 2,000 miles per hour. That's the path of totality. That's where we're going to be. The total eclipse of August 2017. Okay, so we're going to start off looking at some websites. This is how Old Pong Geezer, we did the research to figure out where we're going to go. So I kind of wanted to walk through the steps of how we did that and kind of show you some of the different resources we used. And this is just how I came up with it. And hopefully it'll help you out if you're still looking for a place to go and you still kind of want to see it, figure out how to get there. Basically, we're going to look at a NASA website. We're going to look at the Census Bureau. Uh, we're going to look at Department of Transportation. And we're going to look at the National Centers for Environmental Information. Those four websites basically kind of gave me the idea of where to start looking. So we're starting off, we're looking at the NASA uh, website here and just an indication of the population and, and the path. So the path of the eclipse is going to start on the west coast and it's going to move down this blue line. That's the path of totality. If you're on that blue line or anywhere between those red lines, you're going to have a 100% experience of seeing the, the uh, full eclipse of the sun as it moves through. One thing that I got start off just at the beginning, now I'm over here in Sacramento, so I've got to travel no matter how I go. But one of the things I want to do is I want to avoid a ton of people. And just looking at this map, these little NASA symbols are all different NASA authorized, I guess. Uh, official event locations and you can tell the farther east you get the more populated the activities are going to be the more compressed the more people are going to show up along this path so right off the bat I want to avoid that the other thing is I'm in Sacramento so I don't really want to fly all the way across the country when just right up the road there is, is where this thing starts. So if we go over here and we take a look at the population, we're going over to the Census Bureau now and you can kind of see clearly just looking at the census and this is just a really quick estimation of kind of where all the people are and where they're going to be. Basically you can tell by this chart down here you want the lighter colors. If you're in the, the reds and the oranges that, that's just more dense populations. More people are going to converge to that, that path of totality and and it's just going to be more of a circus or a, a Woodstock kind of environment, which might be great. That might be what you want. Me, I want to kind of be out away from people. I don't want headlights, people with flash cameras that don't know how to shut them off, somebody who's drunk, you know, whatever, kind of messing up the photo opportunity. So I kind of want to get out where it's not so populated. And there's a real clear dividing line, like right through here, which is kind of convenient. That makes me say, I'm going to stay in the western part of the United States. So right off the bat, this that makes it easy. Uh, keep in mind, the path comes right down through here. So there's a a lot of, of open um, unpopulated area to take a look at so that's one thing and then the other thing I want to think about is as I look at these big centers of population potentially millions of people who might be traveling up the freeway systems to get to where this path of totality comes through I kind of want to consider the highway system because a lot of people are going to be driving to get there and so these major blue lines these major arteries are going to carry a lot of people to these, these destinations as, as they fan out from these big areas and start spreading across to get into this narrow band that's going to of, of the path of totality that's going to come through so that's another thing to consider uh, for example i'm going to talk a little bit later about the population in seattle they may come down the five or they may come down this 82 84 system into idaho and so even though this is sparsely populated right in here this interior area of, of oregon the eastern section of oregon there might be a lot of people that are coming out of Portland, Vancouver, Seattle, coming into that area to see it. So that may or may not be a good thing. And at this point, it's sort of a guess. Same thing with down here, Denver. Huge population moving up I-25 to get into the Wyoming area where there's nobody, there's not a big population living there, but there's going to be a lot of people coming up. And so you kind of got to guess, are these people coming up the freeways? Or are they coming across and going up to 76 to kind of get into this area in here uh, in Nebraska, which is also another big population. We've got Topeka and you've got uh, Kansas City and you've got all this other stuff. And then this just becomes a mess on the East Coast. So I'm not even dealing with that. But that's the rationale where I started kind of looking. And then the last big thing, and this is like the most important thing to think about is the clouds. You want to be in a spot where you can see the eclipse. You don't want to be covered in, in clouds. So this is the, the National Center for Environmental Information, and they've got a pretty good uh, website that talks about, you know, historically speaking, where the best chance of having clear skies is for the day of the eclipse based on 
historical averages. And basically what this means here is the lighter colored, the white circles are less clouds and the darker circles are more clouds. So right off the bat, this tells me I want to stay away from the coast because I've got a higher percentage of it being cloudy during the eclipse. Um, and likewise on the east coast, it gets a little bit less likely. Well, I shouldn't say less likely, but you've got a higher chance of it being cloudy. So this, all these white circles in the Midwest through Nebraska, Wyoming, uh, Idaho, that looks like a great place to be right in here. We can kind of zoom in on this thing and take a bigger look at this. And you can kind of see, right, that's that same dividing line we talked about with population that also just so happens coincidentally to be where the best places are to see. So there's another great uh, website and I didn't get permission to use their stuff, so I'm not going to go to it, but I highly encourage people, if, if you want to see more and some really good graphics, it's called eclipse2017.org, and I'll throw up a little text link to that, but they've got some great information on there. There's a, a line chart, a graph, that really describes, it really breaks this area down by longitude. The way they did it is really great. It really shows you where the, the best spots to be are along this entire path, as far as cloudiness goes, or lack of clouds. So um, I recommend checking out that site as well, but unfortunately I didn't have permission to use their stuff and it's copyright writ, copywritten. <laughs> but this lets, lets me, uh, this tells me right here a good spot to go. So basically, bottom line is I want to avoid populations. I want to avoid where the freeways can dump populations along this line. And I want to look for some open sky. So this is, th these were my methods, the NASA site. And I'll throw all these links up in the description of the video. So we had the, the NASA Eclipse site, really good information from NASA on here. And then just a Census Bureau to kind of get an idea of, it's pretty obvious where the populations are around the big cities, but this is a good graphic just to get an idea of where you want to be versus where you don't. A little bit of an idea about the freeways and how people are going to get to where they need to go. Because if you're at this point, if you're trying to find a place to go and you don't already have reservations in a hotel or a place to say, you are out of luck. What you need to do is try to get close enough to be within striking distance within a few hours drive, three hours, four hours, whatever it happens to be of that path of totality. And then you can drive there in the morning and that's like your best shot because there you will not find a hotel room, I wouldn't think, anywhere near where the, the eclipse is going to happen if you haven't done so by now. So, um, and you and a million, two million other people are going to have that same thing and they're all going to be on the freeways that morning trying to get there. So you want to be close enough and somewhere out in the middle of nowhere that you can avoid these major arteries that everybody's going to be trying to take that morning to get there. So that's my thought. We will move on. I've got some really low grade graphics we'll do next from my budget department, but um, take a look at the map and thanks to Google Maps, kind of broke it down, drew the, the path on a, on a Google map and kind of started plotting out all this data. I kind of stuck it all on one map just to take a look at to help you make a decision and we'll talk about that next okay so it's all about location 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 I already know I want to be somewhere in the western part of the United States one of the considerations is the equipment I'm using and what kind of shot I want to get if I was going for the landscape with the eclipse over some kind of a feature, I'd probably want to be up in the Idaho area around the Cascades or in some park with some mountains or some forests or some kind of a setting where I could catch the eclipse with a background of something. But in my case, uh, I'm not. I'm going to go for just the shot of the eclipse. The equipment I'm using, I have two cameras. I have a, my primary and my backup, and they're both APS-C sensors. The primary is going to be my Canon 80D, 80D. And that's a 24 megapixel sensor. And I'm going to pair that with a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens. My backup camera, my second camera that my daughter's going to be shooting with is my older uh, Nikon D5000. And that's a 12.3 megapixel sensor. And we're going to just use a kit lens, the telephoto that came with it. And that's a 55 to 200. That one's going to catch more of kind of the landscape. But uh, my primary, I'm just going for just the shot of the eclipse itself. And I'm going to try to get that as, as big in the, in the frame as I can. So with that in mind, the background or the, the landscape isn't as important. If it were, I would be up in maybe Boise or somewhere in a mountainous area, maybe close to the coast of Oregon, but not in the cloudy, potentially cloudy areas. But that's one of the considerations. So when I look at the map, do I want to be in a, a mountainy type area or a, or do I want to be in a plains wide open area? Uh, so that's one thing I'm, I'm considering. But mainly when I start taking a look, I really want to concern myself with the populations and where I can get in and, and have a good chance of being set up. And there's a, but this is, sort of how I got to where I'm actually going to go. So I took a look at the at the map and from what we talked about before, I don't like the West Coast. There's just too many people there. You've got 4 million people up there in Seattle who could potentially come either down I-5 or, or across and just sort of flood that whole Oregon to Idaho area. And plus you've got 
10 million plus people in the Northern California area that could potentially come up by five or wherever they come from and get into that that same area. So that's a really, population-wise, that's going to be a really busy, tricky place to get in and out of in that, that Eastern Oregon or Idaho type area. Boise alone, there's 200, quarter of a million people or 250,000 people there. And then you've got people in Salt Lake City and that, there's another 200,000 people there. And that's just the big cities. There's all, you know, all the other people that live in that area. So that makes that Western United States, Oregon, Idaho, a little bit more tricky. And then in the Midwest, Denver, there's that's another big population. There's three million people. It just along the, that kind of that front range between you know Denver, Fort Collins, and up into Cheyenne, Wyoming, that are, that could potentially come north up I-25 or go uh, east into Nebraska. So that makes the Midwest a little bit tricky, and you got to kind of think of that. And then the farthest I'd want to go is sort of up against the Mississippi River, that whole eastern Nebraska area. There again, you've got three million people between Kansas City and up in Nebraska, Scotts Bluff and all that. So I don't, I, I, I know just from that, it's, it's, it's more risky being on the West Coast. It seems like the Plains areas are the better choice, just from the population perspective. And then finally, I overlay the weather patterns that we talked about before. And that's more the primary consideration is where can I go that I'm going to have the best chance of having some open skies? Or if there is a thunderstorm that pops up or a cloudy area, hopefully in that late summer, it's going to be isolated and I can move kind of along the path left or right or east or west to try to get to a better spot there again that points me to the direction of the of the midwest rather than the the oregon the oregon area because it's so hard to get around up there and there's not as many freeways that go east to west in that area but if you can look at this part of the graphic uh, i've overlaid kind of the the orange circles are where the best chances are for open skies and then the gray areas are are really where there's more potential for cloudiness which really gives me two choices either oregon idaho or wyoming nebraska because of the big population up there and because it's so hard to move around if I have to move somewhere in the in that Oregon area and there's not a lot of highway systems that kind of can help me get east to west along the path to pick a better spot if I need to, I'm shying away from that. I just like the the Midwest better, wide open plains, and it suits me because I'm not looking for like a mountain background or a bunch of trees or some kind of landscape to shoot that eclipse against. So I'm liking that a lot better. And then finally where that red X is, it just so happens my parents live out there. I, I grew up in Denver, and my parents live um, have moved out kind of into the plains very close. They're in the 95 percentile of the eclipse where they live. So it's a two-hour drive to get directly under the path of totality. And that made my decision super easy because it all came together. I've got a place to stay that's really close to the path of totality. It's in the place I want to be, that open area in Nebraska. I've got a great chance of having an open sky. There's not a lot of people there. I've got to deal with the Denver population, but I'm far enough out in the plains that if I get an early enough start, I can get out there early in the morning and hopefully avoid all of that. So that's my rationale. And it's an easy choice because my other choice was I have an opportunity to stay up in Idaho, but from the the more northern area of Idaho, it's a six-hour drive to get down to the Boise area. And it's just not a six-hour drive on top of all of that with all the people and all the other potential problems. It's just Risk, it's just riskier. I like really Wyoming, Nebraska, that area. So that's where I'm going. And that's my rationale. So hopefully this little cheesy graphic we came up with helps you out if you're looking at some place in the western United States. Those two places that are surrounded by the orange ovals, those are your best chances. And you can kind of consider the population and moving around. And if you don't have a place to stay, good luck because it's going to be really hard to get in and out. I'd recommend kind of that Wyoming, Nebraska area because it's it seems to me like it's going to be a better a better chance of being able to get there without just mass chaos. So there it is. That sums up my choice. That's where I'm going. I've got a couple of locations. I'm focusing on this place called Alliance in Nebraska. There's this they have this attraction called Carhenge and there's a website you'll I'll throw the website link down in the video description I don't know if I've got permission to use their pictures but you just got to check it out just google car hinge nebraska and it'll come up why would you not want to go see a total eclipse around that after the eclipse I'm going to make sure I drive by take out my drone and I'm going to fly car hinge cuz it's awesome in a total americana way so that's going to be my day I'm going to get some lunch at the Dairy Queen or whatever they got out there and then head back to the parents' house in the evening. So that's my plan. I hope you guys have a plan of your own. Let me know in the comments what you think. So take some pics. Let me know where you're going to be. Throw some comments in what your what your thoughts are on this whole thing. If you've got an Instagram account, post it down here so we can kind of share pictures and things and I can check out what you guys are doing. I think that would be awesome. Uh, I'm going to be posting on Instagram and I'm going to post, of course, some videos after the event. I'm hoping for success. 
I'm hoping to have a really great time. I'm hoping to get some good pictures and just really enjoy, enjoy this and once in a lifetime opportunity. And that's where we're at. Uh, next up, my next video in the series, I'm going to go through the gadgets and gear, my favorite thing, all the toys. I'm going to go through what I'm going to be using, look at the lenses, look at the filters I bought, uh, look at some of the other stuff. I'm going to take the little goggles that I'm gonna, we're going to be using. We're going to take a look at all that stuff and what all the equipment is that I'm going to be bringing to this event. Until then, this is OPG, out.